Hello everybody and welcome back to the Victoria Marie YouTube channel. I'm Victoria and we are on live. It has been a few weeks since we've been on live with a scrappy project working with my stash today. Make sure you drop a hello in the chat section. Let me know that you're here. Um, I missed doing lives. <laughs> I was doing them pretty much every week for the past few years. And I posted a video about how the live stream schedule is going to change because there's things in my life that have changed and I uh, have to make room, try to make room for it all. But I've been wanting to go live. And so I said I would do lives at least once or twice a month. So here we are in March, our March Live. How are you doing? Let me know in the chat section. If you like using your scrappy stash, then you will enjoy this live stream. I grabbed some things out of my stash to create a 12 by 12 inch layout. And I've got a really fun design that's really easy to make. I'm gonna be using circle punches or just one circle punch that is, or show you how I use my circle punch. I also grabbed some coordinating elements from my stash that are pretty much all from different designers, different manufacturers, which should be really fun. Um, just to really inspire you to use your stash. You guys know that not only do I enable you, but I wanna also inspire you to use what you have in your scrappy stash. So hello everyone who is joining us today for this live stream. Uh, of course, if you're not gonna be able to be on for the full time, this is recorded and will be available here on the Victoria Marie YouTube channel. You'll just go to my playlist and click on live stream and you'll be able to see all the live streams that I've done on this channel, including this one. I know a lot of you are um, probably working and doing some other things. We have a lot of people who watch during their lunch breaks, depending on where you're at in the country. It could be evening time for you or you could just be getting your day started. But I thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you like today's live stream, make sure you click that thumbs up button because that way YouTube will know that you enjoy this content. And if you are new here or if you aren't new here, and you keep watching the content and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And then if you wanna receive notifications, hit the little bell so that uh, YouTube will let you know whenever I go live and when I post new content to the channel. Hello, everybody. It's so good to see you guys. So good to see you. Reagan says, miss the Wednesday lives. I know, I know. Uh, my goal is to try to do Wednesday live at least twice a month twice a month going forward for the foreseeable future. I would love to do them every week again, but we'll see how the schedule shakes up over the next uh, few months. So hello, happy to have a moment to watch live today. Awesome, awesome, I'm so glad, Lori, thank you. Thank you, friend, I'm glad you're here. Hey, Deb. Oh my goodness, love it, love it, love it. So we're gonna get right into today's project. So I'm creating a 12 by 12 inch layout. And what I did first to prepare for this layout was of course I printed my photos and I also went into my stash to pull out some products. So let me show you what product um, I pulled. Well, let me figure out how to get to my desktop. Hold on <laughs> just a second. I'm also having some problems with my camera mount. So bear with me. I'm gonna have to get a new one. For whatever reason, it just doesn't wanna stay up. Okay, so here we go. I've got a lot of goodies that I pulled for this project. So I have some pattern papers left over. These are from, I wanna say Pink Fresh Studio, and this came from a Hip Kit Club collection that I wanna say this was like last spring or something like that. Um, that I got these beautiful pattern papers and I haven't used them yet. So I wanna make sure that I get them used up. I also grabbed some scraps and I wanna say that these scraps are from the same kit, but I want my motivation for picking these particular papers is I have some pretty sizable scraps left. And so I'm gonna use these in a fun way on the layout. So going into my stash, I wanted to also pick out elements that coordinated with the colors. Now this particular collection was also coordinated with the Simple Stories um, Full Bloom collection. And I actually switched some product out. Some of this product may not be available. I just want to let you know. Uh, some of this product may not be available, uh, but I did post links to this collection specifically because some of you may be interested in it. So if you want to check out the links, go ahead, they're posted in the description. Also, I posted a link to uh, Pink Fresh Studio. So I reached in my stash and just kind of looking at the color story here, when I received the kit, um, there were like purples and pinks and blues and greens and yellows. So there's a lot of really bright colors in here. And I just isolate the pattern papers that I want that are gonna coordinate well with the, uh, with the photos that I have. 
So I just went through and just started pulling things that sort of coordinated pretty closely to the colors of the pattern paper. So I've got some paper person, I've got simple stories, I've got some beautiful day chipboard stickers um, from American Crafts. I think this may have coordinated with a Vicki Wooten collection, but I'm not sure. Uh, some more simple stories that I probably picked up at Tuesday morning, which sadly, by the way, guys, my Tuesday morning is getting ready to close. Like both locations are getting ready to close that are close to me. So I'm really sad about that. Um, some more simple stories. This was from the Simply Vintage collection, which I really loved. And I pulled this because the photos that I'm going to be scrapbooking, um, the pictures of me and my daughter, Corinne, and my spouse, Aubrey. And Aubrey was wearing a red or a plum color dress, purple color dress. Rin was wearing red. And I was wearing kind of a multicolored springy type dress so anyway i want to pick things that kind of coordinate it with the colors but also with the with the outfits we were wearing but also with the product that i'm using i wanted to pull out a metallic so i found my little uh thickers lovely i love this i love this this i think probably coordinated with a maggie holmes or a Paige evans collection at some point um i have some purple font stickers which i'm not quite sure if i'm going to use these for the title but we'll see some chipboard pieces from pink fresh studio I've had these chipboard pieces. Uh, this was from a Hip Kit Club Kit exclusive um, from Kimberly, Kim and Kimberly. They designed a lot of stuff for Hip Kit Club at one point. This was from the September Days collection and I'm gonna use this number three. Sometimes I like to use numbers to represent things on my scrapbook pages. I've got some puffy stickers from Citrus Twist. I've got some stars from Citrus Twist and just some die cuts and things that I pulled out of my collection. So I pulled more than what I will use, but I like to have some variety, but also to show you that you probably have a ton of things in your stash that'll coordinate well with the pattern papers and things that you that you have. Um, some chipboard stickers, some more metallics, some more die cuts, some enamel dots. And then I have this Color Vibes Alpha collection, which was hidden in my stash. Like I totally forgot that I had all of this little alpha sticker pad, which comes with the tiled stickers and then just a regular font sticker. So you have three choices. And I forgot that I had this and I love this. This is from Simple Stories. I love their sticker font. So wanted to make sure that I just gave myself some options when it comes to pulling together a project. Now, while I have all this stuff out, I could definitely just kit this all up and then I can make other layouts with it versus putting it all the way, uh, pulling it all away, which I might do just keep this kitted and then pick some stories that I can scrapbook using these materials. I also try to find things that are just general themes or things that I can just kind of adapt to the, um, to the theme of my layout. So let me know in the chat section, do you use your stash items often? Do you reach for your stash first or do you reach for um, new product? So let me know in the chat, do you reach for stash reach for new product or both. I love kits and so I tend to use my kits first, whether I make the kit or I uh, make it from my stash or purchase it from some of my favorite kit clubs. And I use the items first and then I incorporate it into my stash and then I make more kits and things from there. Um, and then I try to pair things with my, with my new stuff as much as I possibly can. All right, so these are the papers that I'm gonna be using. Showed you some of the goodies I'm gonna be using. Let me know in the chat section, do you enjoy using your stash? Is that something you reach for? And while you're popping that in, I'm going to make an adjustment to my camera mount real quick. If you give me just a second, it is losing its grip just a bit, which is very frustrating because this camera mount is really expensive. <laughs> I haven't had it that long, so I need it to, I need it to work. So I need to adjust that just a little bit. So I do apologize for that. It's getting myself together. That is the beauty of live streams. You just never know what's going to happen there. That is much, much better. Good grief. Hopefully it will stay up during the remainder of the time. Hopefully <laughs> need to get better at using your stash. Yeah. Deb says she does. She uses both. Debbie um, says she goes for her stash. The faithful crafter trying to, hard uh, to reach in your stash more. Absolutely. Um, hi, Sabine. Um, that's a beautiful name, by the way. Um, oh, Deborah, your Tuesday morning's closing too. Yeah, I think they're closing a good chunk of their stores. Yeah, remaining Tuesday. Yeah, I know. I know. Some of us just love, love, love 
Tuesday morning. I got a lot of my stuff. Uh, Sarah says, not buying new product this year aside from last weekend at the expo. Well, you have to buy stuff at the expo, right? <laughs> Um, but I'm stash busting this year, have a great stash and need, uh, nothing else. Uh, try to use stash as Denise, uh, first as I have a lot, but I've been purchasing new product lately. I like to have, Sabine says, uh, I do both, uh, but don't get a kit or something. You know, I think that pairing both your new and your old just kind of like, you know, not only helps you to use your things, but also helps you to kind of think more creatively about the product that you have, for sure. Hey, Evita, how are you? Um, Lori says, trying to use mostly stash this year. And also too, I think that some people, um, some people will go through periods of time where they're not buying a whole lot of stuff and they try to challenge themselves to use their stash as much as possible. And I think that's fantastic. I've done that uh, a lot <laughs> over the years. Um, let's see, Candy Jones says, uh, bought the apron that I have on. Yes, the Scrap Boss apron is available on the Victoria Marie shop. There should be a link posted down below. Uh, bought three of them for Christmas gifts. Oh, well, thank you. I hope your, your Scrappy Pals are enjoying that. Jocelyn says, made it to the live, yay. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, some of the kids can kind of read more feminine. I know that's a constant, uh, feedback from people who like more masculine, uh, scrapbooking supplies. And maybe that's not always available on the market. Oh, Avita says for Tuesday morning, it's closing too. I don't know if Tuesday morning is decided to close all of their stores or, cause I know they, they went through a round of store closures and then, um, and then of course it was announced they were closing more stores. So I don't know if they're like completely leaving the market or or what. So yeah. Okay, so that's what I'm using. Now let's bring over the photos. The photos that I'm working with, my family and I recently went to see Moulin Rouge. And usually when we go see a nice show or we go to dinner or whatever, we like to dress up. <laughs> and it makes us feel good to dress up and put on makeup and that type of thing. And you know, of course, during the pandemic, we weren't going anywhere. So it's nice to be able to finally be able to go to shows and have a lot of fun and whatnot. So this is a picture of us all dressed up and ready to go. To, we went to a restaurant called North Italia in Dallas. Um, this is a photo of Corinne and I, which yes, she is as tall as me. <laughs> She's wearing a red dress. Bree is wearing a plum dress. I'm wearing a dress that has navy blue and what does this have? Navy blue and a coral color, something like that. A picture of Bree and Corinne and then a picture of Bree and I. And I did a, I'm getting ready to do a layout just of a picture of Bree and I and just kind of talking about how, how we've changed over the years in a lot of ways. If you have been with me for a while, then you know what I'm referring to. Um, but I will probably be sharing a video about that, how we've, how we've changed. Um, so anyway, so what I did was I went into Canva and I created a three and a half by three and a half inch circle template, or I used their template and resized it. And the cool thing about templates on Canva is that once you set it up, you can just pop your photo in. And that's what I did. I just popped it into the circular templates and then I printed them out on an eight and a half by 11, all four of these on eight and a half by 11 photo paper. Then I used this circle punch. This is my trusty circle punch here that I got from, this is probably a recollections. Yeah, this is recollections. Um, this is roughly about three and a half inches. And I punched out my photos. And I think the size is slightly different from the, the template to the actual circle punch, but it left a white border. Now I can't cut a circle by hand to save my life. So <laughs> I'm glad that I was able to use my punch because I didn't want any jaggedy edges on these photos. So these are gonna go on the layout. I also created a template for my journaling and talking about how we got dressed up for a night out to see Moulin Rouge, which is fabulous by the way. Um, we get lately when we've been going out for shows and stuff, we've been getting a lot of compliments from people. <laughs> so that's been nice. So I put that in the journaling as well. So this is mainly not so much about us going to see Moulin Rouge. That'll be another uh, layout in my Broadway album. But um, this was just about us cleaning up nicely and going out and how much we love to dress up. That's just kind of our family standard. This punch will also be used to punch out circles out of this pattern paper. I'm gonna show you the design. I'm gonna make little circular pockets 
and they're gonna be anchors for embellishments. And this is a great way to get some mileage out of these punches that we have, right? Uh, yeah, Faith Crafts says, thanks for the tutorial using Canva to create circular photos. Absolutely, absolutely. I know for some people they wanna do different things with their photos and um, once you kind of learn and find out that there are tools available that you can do that very easily, um, it makes the creative process a lot, a lot better. So the first thing I wanna do is, um, let's go ahead and build a background. So I've got a lot of beautiful colors that will go very nicely. I'm kind of playing off because I think the dominant color here in these photos are actually the red in Corinne's dress. And so I know that, of course, red is one of the primary colors. So I can definitely use blue and yellow. But then I also know that this plum plays in the reds. If you look at that on the color wheel, so you're looking at kind of complementary colors, that type of thing. So I know that I can use some of these other colors, even though Brie is wearing this plum dress, I'm not too worried about it. I have a black shawl on, so I'm not worried about that. So I'm just gonna isolate the red and kind of build from there, but also use colors that are super complementary to that as well. So I think that's fine. I'm not gonna think too much about it when it comes to colors and matching my photos. If you've scrapbooked with me for a while, you know I, I, I use whatever I want. <laughs> Doesn't matter, but I wanted to point that out. Uh, yes, yeah, same here, we dress up for the theater. I know, right? <laughs> Lori says, so glad you dress up for the theater. A lot of people don't anymore. That's true. A lot of people don't. Um, they do not. And you know what? I think it just makes it a little bit more accessible for everybody, right? Because, you know, we, we want people to continue to consume theater. And if that means that we're a little bit more casual in doing it, that's great. <clears throat> so I think for this one, I want to use these two pattern papers. I love this purple with this floral, but I might save that for a different day. Let me show you the other sides of them. So this is the other side of the, those pattern papers. This one has a bunch of tags and stuff on it, that type of thing. And so I think what I wanna do is use this as the base for the layout. Excuse me, let me adjust this just a little bit. Good grief, this is just not one working. I, it's time for a new camera mount, guys. Then I'm gonna put this stripe pattern paper on, and this is gonna serve kind of as a more subtle sort of base, if you will, because I'm gonna be adding some more pattern paper to this. So we're gonna have a lot of fun with that. Um, so I think what I need to do, let me grab a trimmer, and we're gonna cut some paper up. Actually, I'm gonna grab two trimmers, because you know, that's how I roll. And these are, pretty thick cardstock, so I'm gonna gut the middle of this one. So let's just trim this up and get it ready. Slice that off, and then we're gonna just cut out the middle. It doesn't have to be like super precise, right? I'm just gonna gut that, and then we can keep that extra piece for this project or another project. I only do this if the paper quality is, um, if it's a pattern that I love, or if the paper quality is a little thin, like think 60 pound paper, not super, super thick. This paper is fine, but um, I wanna preserve that pattern because it's pretty. Let's go ahead and trim this up. And we are gonna trim this down. I wanna say maybe, uh, let me start with 11 and a half by 11, I think. Cause I just wanna like a kind of a thin border. I'm using a paper trimmer from We Are Memory Keepers, but they're now We Are Makers, by the way. They changed their name, if you didn't know, because they offer all kinds of crafting materials for different craft projects these days. I think I'm gonna keep that at 11 and a half by 11 and a half, I think. So you'll start seeing We Are Makers, a lot of their products as they change their branding. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna create somewhat of a grid and I'm just gonna place my photos where I think I may want them. So these two photos will go here at the top and there's gonna be a circular element here. This one's gonna go here. There'll be another circular element here. And then the journaling is gonna go here. And then the title will go right here. 
um, something to that to that effect. I think I might be able to get away with cutting this paper just a little bit more to see more of that flower pattern. Uh, flower, flower pattern. Talk, Victoria. Now, what I like to do before I commit to anything is sometimes I make myself little templates, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these scrap pieces of paper and my circle punch, and I'm gonna punch out some circles, and I'm gonna make some little circle pockets with that. I'm gonna show you that here in a second. But I wanna make sure that I have enough space for all my circles to go. So what I do is I cut up some circles or punch some circles so that I make sure that I have plenty of space for the circular elements that are gonna go on here. And I just cut this out of just regular old scrap card stock. And then I can keep these whenever I'm designing layouts or, or uh, sketches. I like to use my little makeshift templates. Okay, so this is gonna fill up the layout nicely. Each of these are gonna house, not this specific paper, but each of these circles will house um, embellishments. So I'm gonna do some nice layering there. But I have enough room. I think what I wanna do is to trim this pattern paper just a little bit more so I can have a little bit more of a distinct border. And if it kind of goes off the border, I'm okay with that. So let me move these out the way again. Sometimes you don't know. I'd rather trim it uh, to be a little bit more versus trimming it to be a little bit less. <laughs> Let's see, what if we took off? Let's bring it down to here. So I can always trim it up, but you can't add to it, right? Uh, let's see. I try not to get too ticky about these things, but sometimes you do all right let's see what that looks like for us okay yeah that's a little bit better there that's a little bit better okay so i think maybe i want it this way yeah so let's commit i'm using some adhesive from scrapbook.com which i love i'm using their permanent adhesive someone asked me if i use atg uh adhesive you know the big atg dispenser and the answer to that is no. I used to use it, but there are two reasons why I don't use it anymore. One, I get tired of trying to change out the adhesives because I'm always having to watch someone's YouTube video to remember how to do it. And <laughs> two, I have small hands and I also um, have tendonitis in this wrist. And so that particular tool is top heavy. And I found that my wrists were starting to hurt whenever I used it. So I use these smaller ones because I can have a little bit more control over uh, how I'm applying the adhesive. It's not heavy and it's light, so I use these. Cost-wise, they're probably a little bit more than buying uh, refills for an ATG, um, but I'm willing to pay a little bit extra so that you know my wrists don't hurt. <laughs> hey, Genevieve, how are you? I use circles for sports, uh, soccer balls, et cetera. Oh, absolutely, circles are so um, versatile. Sabine says, I think uh, they like it as well. <laughs> cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. The new Tim Holtz trimmer, it looks fantastic. I'm gonna order it next month. I'm really excited to try it out. So far, the reviews have been great about the new Tim Holtz trimmer. If you don't know, Tim Holtz came out with a rotary trimmer, um, pretty competitively priced compared to other rotary trimmers, but it seems to be really nice. Now, what I wanna do is select some pattern papers here that I'm gonna use for creating some circle pockets. And by that, what I mean is I'm gonna take my circle punch, right? So let's use our punches, use our tools. And I'm going to punch out a circle. And I'm actually gonna punch out several circles. So there's three circles on this layout. So I'm gonna punch out six circles and just kind of coordinate the pattern paper. And let's do the stripe one here, or polka dot rather. And let's see, whoops. Do I want that might be, hmm, let's see. Maybe we'll add it. And I'm using both the A side and the B side of the pattern paper. And I'm just gonna coordinate some little circle sets. Let's get this piece out. And I'm gonna build 
some pockets. How about that? Um, or do I want to do it like this? Maybe like this. Or I'm trying to isolate colors here. Maybe that. Okay. And this is great to use up those scrap pieces of paper is to make other embellishments, right? Okay, so I punched out some circles. And what I want to do is I'm going to take my circles and whatever coordinating pattern paper, and I love working with pattern paper. It's so much fun. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create little pockets out of these circles. And I'm trying to decide which papers do I want to use with what. So let's do this one first, the navy blue and the yellow. Okay. So I'm going to, because I don't have an eye for straight, I'm going to make a little pocket out of these two circles and I'm going to decide what's going to go on top. The yellow or the blue. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm going to take one of my circles and I'm going to cut it in half. And these circles are about three and a half. Okay. And then I'm going to adhere the half circle to the remaining full circle. And you can use whatever adhesive that you want. I'm going to use some Barely Art liquid glue. You can also stitch. If you want to add some texture to this, you can also stitch around the edge. For time, I'm not going to do that. But if I had time, I would. And it's not like these particular pockets are going to serve any other purpose other than to house embellishments for this page. These pockets could house little photos, they could house journaling, they could, depending on how big you make it, it could house in a, uh, ephemera or memorabilia. So it can be functional or decorative. Mine are going to be decorative. You could also use, if you don't have a circle punch, you can use circle dies. So I do have a circle die that has a stitched uh, border, which this would be great too. Now, if you just wanted to do a half circle with two different patterns and use that as a part of a um, embellishment or just pattern, just to play with pattern and have these different patterns of circles on your layout, you can do that too. But this is going to be somewhat functional, somewhat decorative. So now I have this opening here that I can tuck things in and have them kind of come out of the little circle pocket. Okay. So I'm going to bring over my photos and I'm going to start lining some things out and deciding where I want stuff to go and which circles I want to use. So I think I'm gonna put these two photos here, this one here, this here. Journaling goes here, okay? Um, I think next up, let's see. I kind of like the idea, let's move those up like so. That's going to be where the title goes. I kind of actually like this pattern paper assortment. Now I'm trying to decide what I'm going to make the pocket out of. And I love mix and mixing and matching my patterns. Let's do stripe there. I know I already have stripe on here, but I'm going to add some more stripe because, you know, why not? Um, so I'm going to just trim this down. And that's going to go there. But before I commit to it, I just want to make sure that's where I want it to go. Okay. And then let's see. Do, 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 do. Like that. I kind of like that too. I just want to do one that's yellow Oops. and that's green. Let's try. I keep coming back to this, to this side. So let's see. I'm also keeping in mind the type of embellishments I may potentially want to use. This is going to be super colorful, lots of textures on this. It's going to be great. Kind of, I love that pattern. That's a lot of fun. Love that. I haven't used any white cardstock at all on this. 
So there we go. I think that's what I'm gonna do. And then I have these extras that I can do something with that I'll just keep with little scrap patterns. But what I was able to do was use some of these scrap pieces that I have left over. Now, I know some of you may be saying, for some of you that you might just toss this out, but what I'm going to do, because I don't want to toss it out, is I'll just trim around it, right? And just use like this little strip can be usable. So I do that right when I'm making things. This little yellow strip, you never know what you might need. And this will just go right back with those patterns with the remaining scraps. And then I can use those little pieces up. You can use these too. Sometimes I used to use these off cuts in my mixed media journal, but we'll stick that in recycling because I'm done with that. I don't go to inertia on those things. I, I keep what I can and then I let the rest of it go to recycling and if I can't use it. All right, so, so far I'm loving the colors and it's subtle enough. These patterns are not super, super like in your face. And so I don't feel like it's distracting from the photos, right? So I think it's gonna work. Okie dokie. Hey, Corinne. Can you turn off this overhead light? I'm gonna, yeah. sorry for the glare. We're gonna turn off the overhead light so it doesn't glare on the photos too much. There we go, that's better. Okay, so let's go ahead and adhere these little circles. Again, you could stitch these, you could, um, Adhere them just with your glue. You can use them as a functional element where you, you know, put little things inside the little pockets. It's completely up to you. Great way to use up scraps. This pattern paper is doing a lot of work for this layout, which I love, which is why I love pattern paper so much. All right, let's go ahead. Just doing a little bead of glue. I'm gonna let that sit for a hot one. I like the idea of tucking things inside pockets and so forth. And this is a really great way to use up your stash. Okay, so I think what I wanna do, because those pockets are looking a little flat, let's add another element to our pockets. So I think I'm gonna pull out this white jute. And let's see, maybe, this particular pocket, I can tie a little bow just to add some texture to that. We're gonna start decorating these little anchors that we're making. Now I'm not the world's best bow maker, so I just, I just try my best. <laughs> my bows are often very wonky. I'm just gonna take some of this low tack tape to hold that in, in place. So this can be your ribbon, it can be your twine, it can be washi tape. And I'm just gonna add a little decorative element here to my circles. Oh, here's another thing to think about. If you have another shape punch that has a decorative border to it, like if you have a scallop circle punch or something like that, then that would also be a really good option here as well, just versus a standard circle or standard shape. Okay. Now, little jute, I'm gonna ask you to behave while I try to tie you into a bow. Anybody else talk to their embellishments? I do all the time. Okay, so I'm just gonna tie a little bow there because what I wanna do is make sure that I have this type of element done <laughs> so that if, uh, when I adhere it to the page, um, already have this element done. I'm gonna have to add a little bit more to this. I'm gonna have you getting out all your things, right? This is a great time to look through your stash and see what you haven't used in a while or something that you haven't used at all. See, this is my problem with bows. I know that there's people out there who can just tie a bow and they make it just seem completely flawless. My bows just never want to behave. Oh, come on. Behave. Okay. Let's just uh, cut that and let it be what it is. Okay. So, can add that there. We're gonna add a little bit of uh, 
adhesive to that. Then I've got some more punches. I'm gonna add a little bit more, we're gonna elevate a little bit. My border punch, right? Cute patterns, I love the grid pattern, right? This punch here from Fiskars, and we've got some from uh, We Are Memory Keepers or We Are Makers now. And what I wanna do is kind of go back to these scraps and let's kind of punch out some borders, shall we? Great way to use those tools, scraps and tools, right? So I'm gonna elevate, I can just leave those circles the way they are, but you know what? We're gonna elevate it just a little bit. Let me know if you still use your border punches. I know some people got rid of their border punches to save space. I only kept a small amount of border punches and I've gotten rid of a lot more over the years. I used to have a nice little collection, but I found I wasn't using them as much. So I only keep the, the patterns that I want. Okay, that's big enough, that's large enough. Let me know if you still use your border punches. I'm only gonna punch what I need. is gonna go probably like this. Uh, yeah, I like that. That's cute. All right, let's adhere that on. Let me know if you still use border punches. Some folks, when they got like an electronic cutting machine, right, you can start cutting out shapes and borders and stuff and to save space and to save money. <laughs> right, they opted to let theirs go. There we go. And I'm just gonna trim this. Hey Mary, how are you? And we've got that cute little element there. Just bringing a little bit more yellow. And then I'm thinking maybe some green over here. Let's do another border punch. This time, I think I want to use, do I wanna use this design or this one? I think I wanna use this one. Okay. And we're just going to Get that lined up, move that out the way. I feel like I need a bigger desk. Sometimes I feel like I don't have enough space. <laughs> All right, punch it, move it along, get it lined up, punch again. Oh, is it not lining up? There we go. Let's punch it again and again. I'm a big advocate for using your tools. You know, we spend so much money on these things, we might as well use them. And guess what? The more you create, the more inspired you become to use your stuff. I find that when I'm on, you know, on a roll, I start thinking about all the things that I can, I can make. More often than, let's see. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, we're gonna start doing lives at least twice a month. <laughs> all righty. So I'm gonna trim this up. Hey, Cody, she still uses her punches. That's awesome. Let me know if you still use your punches. You still own punches. Some people gave theirs away. Let me trim this up just a little bit. Try to get that straight. Nope, uh, I think I should do it this way. Another great thing about using your scraps is that you can look online or look at other products for inspiration and then see if you can make a version of what you're seeing, like the pre-made products, and make your own. Now I'm adhering these to make sure that I don't cover up the little openings. And then I'm just gonna trim this like so. 
And then I got a nice little decorative element there. So I have a bow on that one. I have borders on that one. That's cool. All right, so let's get some of these things tacked down to the background and then we're going to embellish because that's like the fun part. That's what we're all here for. Let's just embellish. Let me get some of this stuff out the way. So far we use nothing but pattern paper, which I love. That's totally my jam. And I just want to get this lined up as best as I can. I'm not like trying to do the most. I just want to make sure that it looks nice. Okay, so let's pop up some things with some foam. Hello, Scrappy Miss. Missed you too, friend. <laughs> I missed you guys. I had to take a little break, but I'm glad I'm back. Okay, so let's pop up the photos because those are kind of the star of the show. It's kind of like the whole purpose. And I'm just gonna use some foam tape from scrapbook.com to adhere these down. And I think I'm gonna pop up the photos, but I'm going to, I think I'm, I want to, this is not too bulky. I think I'm gonna adhere the little decorative circle pockets down because there's gonna be some embellishments that will be popped up, that'll be tucked in and layered. So we'll do that. At first I thought I was gonna pop everything up, but I think just the photos. Alrighty. Now, if I'd been a little bit more planful, I would have trimmed some foam into circles so that I have a little bit more even foam distribution in the back of the photos, but I did not do that. <laughs> That's okay. I think I'm gonna need probably to put it like this. It's probably best. That way they stand up and they're not falling. This one looks like it needs a little bit more foam. Need to go through your stuff and purge, yeah. Cody says, bought a few punches, donated a few. Switch the thin cuts. Oh yeah, absolutely, easier on your hands, yeah. There we go. We need to let our tools adapt to where we're at, you know, I've noticed that um, there's some tools that, like my ATG gun, I don't use anymore because it hurts my wrist to use it. All right, let's just put that there. If you're new to the Victoria Marie YouTube channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Would love to have you here as a subscriber. And then if you hit the notifications, you'll be notified every time I go live or post content to the channel. I have a spring clean series that's gonna be coming up. I'm in the process of finishing planning that series. Uh, I've got some organization projects that I wanna do in this studio. So stay tuned for that. We actually are getting ready to make some changes to the, stu <laughs> to the studio. So I moved up in this space last year sometime, or maybe the year before, I can't remember. And then I did a little bit of reorganization and bought a little bit of new furniture last year. And that process is here on the Victoria Marie YouTube channel. So if you want to check that out, please do. And now our needs are changing yet again because Corinne needs, my daughter needs a space to practice ballet when she's not in the studio. And so we have a ballet bar uh, that is in our garage right, <laughs> right now. So we need to bring that in so she can use it. So there's going to be a spot up here that's going to be dedicated to that. And then Aubrey took up, um, good night, Sabine. Uh, Aubrey took up jewelry making recently. And now she has learned as a new crafter that the supplies multiply <laughs> when you start a new craft. So she would like to have uh, a space for her jewelry making. And um, her office is downstairs. Her office used to be my office. And then I moved up here. And so she has decided that she wants to be able to be up here and craft with us, which I think is awesome. I love it when my family is crafting all together. It's one of my favorite things. And so we're going to carve out a space for jewelry making up here. So this is going to be dedicated craft space. And then Aubrey and I are going to share what is now her office uh, to do things like computer work, admin stuff, homeschool stuff that type of thing. So we're gonna be switching that up here this summer. 
<laughs> the space has changed at least three or four times at some point. So yes, we are a crafty family. Absolutely. And I love it. I love it. So this space is going to change and I think we're okay with that. All right, so just getting these popped up and trying to make it as straight as it's going to be. I'm not trying to, not trying to make it a deal. Okay, boom. So I've got my pockets, I've got my photos, and now it's time to embellish and add a title, which I love, love, love. Okay, so I have a lot of things to choose from. I pulled more than what I'm actually gonna use for this project, and that's okay. I can leave this out and kit it up, and I can use it for some other things, other layouts. Okay, so I think what I wanna do is just kind of look to see what I have available. I'm gonna start with this circle up here and start adding some stuff. I know I wanna use this camera for sure, so I think I might, let me open that up. I like to lay things out and see what I have. I kinda of like the idea of taking this camera here and just kind of sticking that like in the pocket something like that um bu -bu -bu. let's see you could also do this with other shapes like oh i'm thinking if you have a Le um, an envelope punch like the mini envelopes that would be super fun to do any other shapes stars hearts those would be really fun I like a butterfly I always like butterflies on my layouts that might not be the final spot there but you know this green goes nicely with this collection so maybe I'll add a little bit of a flower situation there just kind of tucking that in inside and outside of that pocket and I love love these die cuts those are pretty this tray by the way because I know someone will ask I got from Target the Dollar Tree dollar spot where I get a lot of my trays and Let's go to this little Simple Stories collection. I see this little label tag situation that says beautiful. So that would be nice there. So let's go ahead and finalize that layered cluster. The circle is serving as the anchor, meaning that's your starting point. I talk about this a lot when I'm talking about layering, is you establish a starting point and that circle pocket is. And so now I'm just gonna tuck little elements in there. I'm going to put this little label here that says beautiful. Put that there. Let's go ahead and put the uh, butterfly like it just kind of floated on top of that circle. Let's put that there. It's going to be a lot going on. Yes, we will film the transformation. Absolutely. That's going to be a series here. <laughs> There's lots of things that we uh, that I want to do in this space. And so I'll be filming it along the way. There's gonna be several videos that, um, there's one that I'm doing that I go through my paper collections and organize those. I have an idea for that. I have to reorganize my uh, solid cardstock. I am, oh goodness, what else am I doing? My craft closet because past Victoria said, oh, we'll just wait <laughs> to organize that. And now future Victoria is paying the consequences of that decision last year. <laughs> so. It will, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not happy with that decision that I made last year. Um, so, yeah, not happy. So that's gonna be one video. Um, and then I'll have a few other organizational things, but you guys will, I'll take you along on the, uh, on the journey. And then if you're a Victoria Marie patron, you get a behind the scenes look at the whole process and some bonus footage, so consider becoming a patron. Okay, so I like the way that this cluster, let me actually zoom in just a little bit on that. So I love how I can just tuck this little element right here inside the pocket and then the flower so it looks like it's just coming out. 
and then it just looks like the butterfly just kind of landed there so that's good what I want to do is come in and I have some Jen Hatfield little hearts and I like adding things to the center of my die cuts so I'm gonna put that there and I need to add just a little bit more adhesive because the sticky part of this little puffy heart is not all that strong so I'm just gonna pop this here just to add another textured element I like nice chunky um, layered clusters lots of dimension so we're just going to put that there just for some added detail and we're good with that little circle i like the way that that looks all right let's actually go over to this one over here and let's see here what else do i have i know i want to use the number three for representing the three of us um for this project and thought I had pulled something out. Where is it? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Hmm. I thought I might want it to use one of these little flourishes. Let's see here. I love these stickers. I bought like, I don't know how many sets of them. I bought a lot. <laughs> I bought a lot of them. So I thought about tucking that in just to add some more gold to that. That looks pretty. And just to kind of keep a little bit of continuity when I'm doing something like this, thank you, is add um, similar items to the, to the different areas. So if I'm gonna use uh, chipboard and die cuts and stuff here, then I'm gonna use chipboard and die cuts and things over here as well as here, just to add some continuity to that. This might be where that number three comes in to represent the three of us. So I might put that here somewhere. We'll see. We'll see how that looks. I'll come back to that. And let's go ahead and add in do 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 do. I see a flower here. Let's see if it'll work. Chipboard. I'm just going to pop it out. And it says, oh, goodness, these are happy times. And I could layer that right on top, but also tuck some other things underneath there. So that's an option. can also come in, since I used some die cuts, from this little set here, there's the same color, I can tuck that here as well. It's kind of tucking in, maybe add, let's see what else can I add? These things sometimes always come with birds. I don't use birds a lot <laughs> or at all on my layouts. I'm always tempted to, but I never really do. Um, let's see. I'm really loving how it's playing off the greens. I want to tuck that there. I kind of like that better than the chipboard piece. And... I like this element that says photographs. What I'm going to do, because all of this is just gonna fall out, I just can feel it. Let's just do this. Do, 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 do. Cut that on the side, which is what I should have done in the beginning. I'm gonna just reach in, grab what I need. I'm gonna grab this little sticker that says photographs. And that's gonna go there. I think I like that. I need something else that's gonna zhuzh that up. Okay just a little bit more. Um, I love that. Just again, adding that whole butterfly element. I love using butterflies on my layouts. Love it, love it. And then there are 
<laughs> Calvin Bob will make you use a bird on your layout. That's so true. <laughs> that is so true. I would have to go rogue and be like, no, thank you. <laughs> oh, you can use it on a card, but not, I don't, I don't know. I've never used a bird on a layout. Look at that little gnome. Look at that guy. These little gnomies. <laughs> so cute. All right, sidetrack, Victoria. Squirrel. I kind of like that. Okay, let's add a little bit of dimension, more dimension to this so it doesn't look super, super flat. So let's grab some foam. And I have a lot of foam. I have my box of foam. Let's stick that there for right now. Working on this little cluster here. It's very easy to kind of get carried away. Um, but when I'm layering, I've, I've been doing this technique so much that I know when I just need to stop. Um, and it's usually when something's starting to look overwhelming, but I like that composition. So what I want to do is just pop that up. Let me grab some more foam. I need a bigger foam square. There we go. And I'm just going to pop this one up so that it's kind of coming out just a little bit, a little bit more pronounced. This one here, let's go ahead and pop that one up too. I'm gonna get a small foam square for that. Here. And those will just hold that in place. Just tuck that in my little circle pocket. And then this is supposed to have adhesive on it, but you know what we're gonna do? We are going to we are going to add a little bit more adhesive to that, to this guy here. There it goes. And then this has adhesive on it, but I'm gonna add just a little bit more. And to some of these elements that already have adhesive, when you add liquid adhesive, it kind of gives you a little bit more wiggle room, just in case you wanna move something around. Okay, so I have this uh, embellishment cluster ready to go. And now we're going to move over to this one here. And again, let's bring in some die cuts, just adding, making sure there's some continuity, right? And I'm just going to look here to see what I have. We'll also do another butterfly. And I could have used another element, right? I didn't necessarily have to use a butterfly. I wish I liked the bird. That would look cute there, but I, I don't like the bird element. <laughs> I want to keep this intact, though, because I could use it for something else. Let's see. I want to use that. And then how about we do another floral element there? But what I want to do is I want to cut this like so. I'm going to do a little bit of fussy cutting because what I want to do is kind of make it swag over my little circle pocket. So I'm just going to make that small little edit. Don't be afraid to cut your stiff. And we're just going to tuck that in like so. So that kind of swags out. Then we have our butterfly and then we'll add another little element there. I love to layer. It's so much fun. <laughs> I love the gnomes. They're so cute. I have two little gnomes that are waiting in my garage, ready to be put out for the spring. I haven't done any gardening yet, but uh, we're going to here in another week or so, so I can put my little gnomes out. Okay. Okay. This is going to be popped up as well. I use, I go through a lot, a lot of foam adhesive, a lot. So I love my dimension. We're going to stick that there. Okay. Lovely. Let's go ahead and see if we have something else that we can tuck in there. I like this that says simply the best to put here. 
kind of a play there on that circular kind of half circle situation. And let's see, there's a little chipboard. If you want to tuck that, maybe like that, then something else can go here. Let's see. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's staring me right in the face. Let me come over here. And I want, since I have gold embellishments here, albeit small here, I have this one. I want to add a little bit more gold there. Let me see what my options are. I think I want to do something, again, just for continuity's sake here. And then maybe we can come in and add that three, just very subtle, very, very subtle. Okay, so now we've got beautiful clusters ready to go. I need to do something here for sure. I'm gonna straighten up a little bit while I think about it. Need more time for crafting. I know, work always gets in the way. Hey, Elizabeth, how are you? Um, work always seems to get in the way of our crafting time. <laughs> you know, I always say as, as you know, I, since I do this full time there, I've, I go through phases where I am doing a lot more administrative and managerial type of work or computer work sometimes versus, you know, actually making things or when I'm not working, you know, falling, you know, victim to the couch and Netflix. <laughs> I love the Netflix and chill. <laughs> and then I think I could be doing something like I could be scrapbooking or I could be taking one of the gajillion million classes that I've purchased. Like I'm, I'm currently uh, taking a, it's called sketchbook revival where um, there's several artists over a few weeks where you, they have a lesson that's based on, you know, a lot of different topics like watercolor, drawing, whatever. And I saw it advertised through a, a newsletter that I subscribed to for an artist that I followed. I'm like, oh, this should be a lot of fun. And so I purchased, um, it's free, but if you want 24, if you want access to it, then you, you know, you pay to get access to it. And that's what I did. It was very affordable. And so I did that and, um, I haven't done the lessons yet and they're on day three. And so I told myself, you know, to hold myself respond, you know, accountable to this, I'm going to not only take them myself, but I asked Corinne if she'd be interested to play along. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to make time to do that along with the other crafty things I like to do. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just straightening up here. I'm trying to decide where I'm going to go next with this and it's probably gonna be the title, but I also, I'm trying to figure out what I want here. And there's some little goopy goop that just got there on the layout. So let's get out our little eraser here, our gummy eraser. I don't know what that was. Okay, so because I already handled the journaling part of it, which is great, um, I don't have to worry about that, but I'm trying to think of what I wanna put here. So I'm wondering, as I'm looking through some stuff, that's kind of a small little, little spot. And I don't wanna overwhelm it. And if I don't find something like right now, it's okay. I'll figure out something later. I kind of think like a label to go here, but I'm not, there's not one here that kind of speaks to me. Um, there's loving every minute. Nah. Let's see. If and if you know if it doesn't work right now, I'll figure something out to go there. Thought about hearts. I don't think I need anything else in those layer clusters. I think I'm fine. Um. Okay. Well, maybe not. Maybe uh, I don't have anything that I'm going to use from this. I'll find something. Okay, so I'm trying to decide, because there is a sticker on this sticker sheet. Let's go ahead and move on to the title for this layout, and I'll figure out something to put here. 
I don't want to force it. So I love this layout. So I don't want to put something on there and be like, ah, and then it's stuck and it's a whole thing. <laughs> Bye, Vita. Have a nice day. Okay. I like this word beautiful. And I thought about putting that here, like beautiful night out. That's really pretty. Or maybe just beautiful, we clean up nice, or what, what was my title going to be? Now I forget what it was going <laughs> to I forget what my title is going to be. But I want to use this word beautiful. I think that just looks so pretty on there. If I pop that up. Versus just using straight up block. Okay, I'm going to commit to that. Um, I'm going to put some little foam on the back. And then I'll figure out the rest of the title. And if I don't figure that out right now, I, I will by the time I get ready to post the picture of this, this project. What was my title going to be? Oh my goodness, I totally forgot. Was it dressed up? Night on the town? I can't remember. But I love that. That is just, yeah, yeah, yep. Uh, we're going to keep that there. Now I just need to th remember what I was going to put for the rest of the title. Hmm. I don't remember. Thanks, Lori. Have a good one. Yeah, I don't, um, Alice, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do here just yet, but I'll figure it out. That could go there. Ooh, what if I, okay. If I remove this, will it rip my pattern paper? I hope not. Let me go slow. I'm kind of liking this idea too. Just moving that circle and then doing beautiful and then finishing out the rest of the title here see this is the cool thing about a grid because then you can put it wherever you want i still kind of like the idea of this here with this here to the side okay so this is what i'm going to do because it's the top of the hour um and i try to keep these to an hour i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to play around with this a little bit more and then when i'm done with it i'll definitely post a picture so make sure that you follow me on instagram if you're uh follow me on facebook part of the victoria marie group facebook group um and then i'll also post a picture um i'll probably post a picture of something on my blog i can't remember not sure yet but the two things i'm going to do is finish fleshing out the title because i can't remember what i was going to title this something like night on the town or all dressed up or something like that. And then I'll figure out what I want to put here kind of at the top of the journaling so it doesn't look so stark. But I do want to use this little chipboard piece. I think that's really pretty right there. So I'll finish that up off camera. But 99.9% .9 of the layout is done. So we've got circle photos with the circular pocket. Let me move this out the way. Let me move me out the way. There we go. Circle photo, circular pocket, a really great way to tuck things in. So this can be embellishments, great way to use up some of those smaller embellishments, a really great way to use up your uh, scrap paper and you can mix and match and tuck things in and have things on the outside of those little circular pockets. Also used a variety of materials from my stash, which is awesome. Got my circular photos that I made using Canva, very easy to do. And I just love the way this came out, just having so much fun um, making those layered clusters. Y'all know layering is my jam. Okay. So I'm going to spend a little time figuring out my title. I think I definitely want to put it over here to the left-hand side. I just like that scripty font. It's so pretty. And then I'll come in with some other, uh, letters or something here, and then I'll figure out what I want to go there. So it's not so stark. But other than that, this layout is pretty much done. And so let me know what you think in the chat section. Um, I believe that I have another live stream that's going to be scheduled for the 
first week of April, I believe. I don't have my calendar in front of me, but you'll definitely see the notification. And the best way to stay up to date with what's going on here at Victoria Marie Designs is there's a link in the description. If you sign up for my e-newsletter, then you'll get a email. I try not to bug people too much, but <laughs> you'll get a weekly email. And that's also how I communicate things that are coming up. Like I have a couple of workshops that are coming up. Um, and all that good stuff. So you definitely want to make sure that you uh, sign up for the newsletter. Also, if you're looking for a scrappy community, join the Victoria Marie Scrub Boss community on Facebook. The link is posted there in the description as well. And love to have you come and join us. We're a very laid back group. People like to share their projects and that type of thing. So come and check us out. And I'll be back here uh, first week of April for another live stream. And I think, I can't remember what I'm doing with that one, but it'll be fun. I'm also planning something really cool. It's gonna be a mega live stream on National or International Scrapbook Day, which is the first Saturday of May. And I believe this year it's gonna be May 6th. So stay tuned for those details. That's the reason why you wanna to subscribe to the e-newsletter because I'm gonna be announcing that pretty soon. It's going to be an extended live stream session. I'm going to be making all kinds of scrapbook projects, some new stuff from my, uh, some things from new collections, some stuff from my stash. I'll be talking about scrapbooking techniques, all kinds of fun things. So you definitely want to stay tuned for that. Mark May 6th on your calendar. You can join me live here on the YouTube channel. There are going to be a lot of people putting on a lot of things that weekend. So make sure that you mark your calendar, make a list of all the cool things that you want to get involved in on that day so we can celebrate a full day. Uh, well, actually, it's a full weekend, <laughs> really. A uh, full weekend of uh, honoring scrapbooking and this beautiful hobby that we have and being storytellers, right? Um, so yeah, make sure you come and, and stay tuned for that. Uh, put on those reminders for YouTube so you'll be notified each and every time I pop up here live and post new content here to the channel. Thank you everybody so much. I will see you in a couple of weeks. Of course, come join me back here on the channel for more content. And then of course, follow me on social media. Thanks so much for joining me today, everybody. Have a good one. Bye-bye.